yeah, there's no way these two didn't ooze out of a test tube because they don't even look like real humans. They look like a pair of Colombian crickets. All right, welcome back, ladies and ladies with dick. If any of you struggle with the issue of speaking to a girl without making her want to hurl, I present to you the solution to all of your problems, which is the first ever edition of the long-awaited Briz merch. Two shirts, two stickers, one beanie, and zero condoms because the designs on these bitches are so raw you don't even need them. And can you believe it? A YouTuber's merch that isn't ridiculously overcharged and leave you feeling like you just took a night trip to Vegas. I guarantee you'll split the lips in between every woman's hips wide open wearing this sexy attire, so if you want a shot at getting your parents back together or grow a few extra inches on your penis, then head on over to the link in the description or search up bridgeshop.com to change your life around today. Also, I'm having some issues with shipping that I'm working out actively, so I want to give a warning that it might take an extra week or two to get out your orders. Last thing I'm turning into is Punch Made Briz, so apologies if any deliveries are late. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Island Boys. They're almost a household name for about all the wrong reasons. It's not ever right to judge a book by its cover, but for this case, I'm taking a shot right across the cover art. It doesn't even take five seconds to diagnose five separate STDs between these two. Hell, I can almost feel myself contracting herpes by just the sight of them. They look like a humanized version of a yeast infection. But I knew these two were destined for failure once they believed a six second snippet was going to be their ticket to success. Which for everybody besides Epstein maybe was their first introduction or look of these incest celestials. And the smash out single that I am referencing is the famous freestyle they sang out in some grandfather's pool when he was sleeping. Which I'll just show now as a refresher to anybody that hasn't heard a tune being played by these two dick licking Silent Hill looking clickers. You know, I would love to have this played at my funeral, not for a time of remembrance or sadness. I want to play it just so everybody there would be jealous of me being the one in that casket. I mean, what can you even really say about these two that you can't say about the noises you would hear in the hallway when the special ed students were running out? To everybody on this planet, this would come off as a nice song to torture prisoners at a concentration camp with, but to these two, this piece right here was nothing short of a Grammy nomination. Universal Records would have been crawling on all fours at their doorstep with a 360 deal and Madonna as their first feature once their ears came across this banger. So that's the clip that led them to stardom, and I use that word very loosely because it moreover led them to being insulted by all walks of life and being the internet's punching bag for a better half of a few months. Nobody really ever took these two seriously or saw them as prominent young artists carving the future for music. In fact, any musician that even gave them the time of day to react to them just practically insulted and laughed at their existence. I'm speechless. Two goofballs in the pool. This is completely irrelevant, but every time I I see Kevin Hart sitting next to somebody, it reminds me of a parent bringing their kid to a work picnic. But if you thought these unkept cordy caps were going to step down after something as embarrassing as this, you couldn't be more wrong. Because to these yellow spiked dogs, getting the attention from the likes of Snoop Dogg was like receiving the Medal of Honor. They had their idols notice them, and now it was time for the world to as well, because shortly after this, the Island Boys performed their Snorendous song live in front of thousands of people at a festival, where they were met with the entire crowd booing them right as they started doing their summer jam slammer that had everybody's bellies bonking and booty thonking to this mesmerizing performance. I would have rather yelled he has a knife at two blind people and watched them scurry away before listening to another second of this Hillsbury horse fire. I gotta hand it to him though, they are the first musicians I've ever seen to make the crowd go fucking mild. And I would have too, because I couldn't imagine dropping 250 for a front row seat only to see two methed out palm trees dangling their meat in front of my face. Nobody on this great green grass was giving any time to listen to their dumpster ass because they sing like they have a chip clip attached to their nutsack at all times. No choreography, no voicing at all, I mean it's just like two yodelers on top of a trash heap. But to the Island Boys, what they just did was a precious piece of American history. Showing how they're rewriting the definition of music by dropping an entire video for it only a few weeks later, waving around like an inflatable people at a car dealership while a bunch of women held at gunpoint had to awkwardly dance in the background. It felt like I was watching a real life rendition of the Belco experiment where they would just explode into pieces if they didn't stop dancing. But this would only heighten their egos even more, causing them to believe they have more of a celebrity status than Kanye or Jesus Christ himself. Whenever people would run flat out of options, 
They would scoop up the Island Boys as a source of entertainment to laugh at them on interviews or stuff of that nature. And you know, for the first door to be open into their lives and their story to actually be shared to the world, you would think that they would try to be at least nice or give off a good first impression. But instead, they decided to show off to everybody how much of insufferable, insecure, ridden, entitled pieces of shit they are by getting offended at someone that simply told them to save their money. By the way, we're the only ones in Palm Beach County that got permanent uh, Johnny Dang teeth uh, uh, in Palm Beach. You should hit up Guinness Book of World Records. Yes. They might take that one. Something like that. I, them up. I think if God forbid it doesn't go in your guys' direction, for real, oh. I think you guys take all of your jewelry assets and invest it in something. So you guys <laughs> will never ever be broke again. So I don't think there's gonna ever gonna be a broke situation. But I'm saying like if you guys into yeah. retirement, no, you could definitely flip their <laughs> yeah. jewelry into for, God, let me, down payment or something. One, let me for sure. One, let me tell you something. George, stop talking. Have multiple. <laughs> Wait, that oh. was. Yeah. Hey, that was got, that was nah, for you doing. guys. Yeah, you. you that wasn't like a hate I shot. I don't need. I don't yeah. need financial yeah, advice. We don't when I probably make more money. You. I mean, they're like feral animals. I bet if you put a ball behind your back, they would think it would have disappeared. So of course they would treat a word of advice like their very lives had just been threatened because they don't have the brain capacity to even process social cues. You could probably wish these motherfuckers a happy birthday, and they would start running away while crying. Everybody starts off as an asshole at birth, but the Island Boys decided to stop right there. There, settling their destiny and whole personality to be the two biggest strata chocolates that mankind will ever see. And I think they did a spectacular display of it with this interview. It's almost like threatening a cashier with a gun when he asks you for your chain. My brain is going dense for even trying to make sense of these corn candy cock descended tube socks. And if that wasn't already pretty stupid and petty enough, the Island Boys got so insecure about this whole ordeal that 30 seconds later they rampaged and waddled off the podcast. Even though they just threatened to beat the show host's ass. It could be an ass. I could turn it off and be an asshole. It's not gonna go in your favor, but look. No, it could go in my favor. Like, you really don't want to go there, bro. I could go there because okay, I, I was giving you guys nice advice and you guys were being yeah. assholes. Hey, okay, George, cool. keep talking. Keep I'm gonna walk out. I'm, I'm right here, you guys. Okay. So what are you trying to say? I'm just saying, you guys are throwing a lot of threats. I'm sitting right here. No one's threatening you. You guys said it's not going to go my way. Not to throw an intermission screen here, but I just find it adorable in how he said that. In a moment of intimidation, their response is to get intimate and start pillow talking the motherfucker out of fear. I felt like another second of silence out of that would have turned out with Fly Soldier diving on top of him to ride his face. It came off as so delicate and sweet, like he was about to ask this motherfucker if he wants to get engaged. Apologies for the interruption. I just thought I had to comment on the only time these motherfuckers ever be sweet is when they're in an argument knowing that a verbal duel between the two would be about as fair as Hasbulla facing against Kimbo Slight. Oh, yeah. This I'm, is not the Nilk oh, Boys. We don't do fake talking, over please. here. Yeah. What are you, are you trying to scare me or something? I'm not scared of you, huh, man? All right. I'm not scared of you guys either. Okay, so just keep it like that. You know I mean? I th I'm going to I'm gonna step in for a hey, second. Hey, just, I, hold on. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, hold on. a podcast. No. Here, I'm moving for you. I was giving you nice advice, bro. I, I agree with that. Did I did I say anything mean? I, you fucked up, George. <laughs> Yeah, I can bet even the most seasoned of war vets wish to have at least half the emotional strength that these two share. God, it's like toddlers telling them you're not getting them a toy at Target, and they even back this up more by coming back with Gru from Despectable Me out of all people to cheese raid these bitches to extinction. You said so, Dory and Lee both, and that makes no sense. What the well, fuck I think are you, you saying? saying? No, I, I said, if God forbid it doesn't yelling, work hey, out, bro, who are you? <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> God forbid a situation you know would happen. You, you know me from Island Boys, but you know I'm thugging, bro, right? But you I just said right now. It's probably because the cameras are still on. Yeah, I already told you trying to show up, bro. We're leave not going alone. Who's fucking with you in the beginning? Bro, I never stopped fucking with you okay, guys. Okay, but George, leave it alone. I leave said, what alone? Yourself. So now they're getting mad at the microphone for being present at a podcast. Really don't know what goes on in the heads of these two. I'd like to imagine their brain is like the DVD screensavers they use when you pop the disc out and they talk every time it hits a fucking corner. After this fiasco, their relevance quickly began to plummet, only getting into headlines for US army recruitment and domestic violence and after those incidents they practically fade into obscurity down in the abyss under the floorboards they didn't even fall off until they weren't you see the island boys had one more dick up their sleeve to prove to the world that they were made to be superstars and what way to do it best than incest because that's exactly what they turned to in the past few months as a marketing strategy to promote their only fans i mean this is more innovating than the first time man touched the moon reaching to such a clout goblin point that their reasoning was if came from the same sperm then they can suck each other's worms i usually applaud out of the box thinking and outstanding achievements, but this, this gives me a scratch in my throat that only a bayonet could fix. Just feast your eyes on these two. It's like I'm witnessing a Rule 34 version of Beavis and Butthead. Luckily, you all have been blessed by North Korea.
Luckily, you have all been blessed by the North Korean authority level of YouTube policies we live under now, so I can't exactly show the full image of what exactly is occurring, but basically he is licking the ink off them damn tads like it's a fucking DQ blizzard. If SCDs can be transferred through an image, this one would be the first to do it. And of course, when met with the whole, the island boys resort to fucking each other's deeper, because it would only get worse from here with them releasing a video giving their little baby slugs a nice mouth hug, or in layman terms, sucking the skin off each other's dick. And I'm not obviously going to show even a single pixel of that, because YouTube would probably JFK my ass the next time I step outside. I mean, we don't gotta take time to turn and talk to our partners about this. If you wanna conduct your own suck studies to see if I'm capping or not, go right ahead, because flick a nipple gold and let the truth be told, I would rather swan dive off of a building than to see these two lick up their own high fructose porn syrup again. And the worst part about all of this is that it actually worked. These brothers went through shortcomings and long hardships, figuratively and literally, to get where they're at today, because they got exactly what they wanted from the start, which was more eyes on them than they ever had before. Their great mastermind of a plan actually turned out to work, and you know, if that's the mark they want to leave on the world and have them go down in history as the two brothers that turn lovers, then so be it. Matter of fact, since they already clasped kissers, I hope they mash pissers next week so they can get arrested for family charges. I'm perfectly fine with setting an example out of people, and the Island Boys have delivered into the hearts of many what exactly not to do with their lives. They've made and done just about every no good, very bad, disastrous decision you can ever make in your time on this planet, so just let this almost be a pat on the shoulder, or let these brothers' queefs turn a new leaf for your future endeavors, because obviously they just ruined about any chance of making it into a college or having a successful social life ever again. And they were already kind enough to prove it by failing at getting a mother and daughter's number by having them find out they played a game of tonsil hockey with each other. <laughs> My mom just came and visited me in Phoenix. I just moved Someone out here. He kissed his brother. <laughs> This is our time in Phoenix. And I guess this rejection hit him so hard that he decided to take a ship to the cocks instead of the docks, revealing to the whole world the jaw-dropping news that he was officially coming out as gay. As another desperate attempt to gain attention, and even if it was true, it's not like this news would suddenly make the world stop and have everybody taking off their hats and looking up to the sky upon being interrupted by this urgent broadcast. Point being, nobody could give one luck of a fuck, and even if they were, what surprise would it be to anybody out there watching anyways? And I'm a top. I'm not a. I'm never a bottom. I'm a top. You know what I'm saying? I'm like that for real. You gotta support me because you feel me. I like men, and that's just. It is what it is. No, I meant. I didn't mean that. I that didn't have you pumping your fists in the air for social justice. I don't know what will. I've never seen a man proudly say he takes dick with this much of cutting edge boldness. If he delivered this at a theater, I guarantee you all you would hear is nothing but clapping. But nobody did, and that's why his brother bent over so you can clap him instead. Normally I'd be giving any muscle queen coming out a great big hug, but that all got ruined once you started sucking your sibling's lips off his damn face. There's no defending something like this unless your last name is Lannister. I mean, their whole entire lives are like a Black Mirror episode. You really can't predict what the hell could be next. Like having FouseyTube out of all people telling them they are bad inspirations to their audience before having somebody off his entourage slap his shoulders out of place. We don't fuck each other, bro. Hey, wait, listen, I'm asking you a real question, man to man. Go ahead. Are you a man or not? Of course. How many genders are there? Let's Two. See. Male and female. Do you guys suck each other's dicks, sir? Is Definitely that not. That was a popsicle, bro. Yeah, popsicle. Yeah. If we didn't suck each other's dick, I would never touch his you dick. You didn't see him put an emoji on Like, never. 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 I, go I swear to God. He he he's the, look, he's the one that came up with that idea. What an outstanding display of dexterity coming from Fly Soldier here. He delivered that shit like he was auditioning for the Hamilton play. They say the lies can be traced to the eyes, and from the stare down he keeps giving on his brother's genitals, it seems like he's almost doing everything he can not to crawl into his brother's one-eyed toot and trawler. But I would be lying if I said this wasn't already more entertaining than Jersey Shore at this point. If I was MTV, I would start throwing hundreds at them while they kiss each other like I'm at Stonewall. Because this right here could possibly, maybe, with a slim chance, replace the 30 minutes of their 24-7 uninterrupted ridiculousness airing. What else there? What else there? What else there? Wait, wait, I was about to say something to one of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold You know, now that I really think about it, everybody in this room are the most unlikable people on the internet. It's like I'm watching a great cuck committee being thrown. Indian Chicken Little in the back got famous for faking his own death and then getting jumped. Bling Bling Boy in the middle got his big break from being a pretentious asshole in Dr. Phil. And Fousey Tube is dishing out sex advice to people even though he manipulated a drunk woman to fuck him in an airport bathroom. It's like a detective with Parkinson's throwing strings across the board. No dots are connecting. There's so many questions I probably won't ever get the answers to, but any of these guys giving life advice to each other is about the same as Ted Bundy calling another human a piece of shit. Each other. 
On the cheek, dog. Yeah, I've seen on their lips before. Listen, can I tell you something? No, if they did that, they're gay. No, no, it's not gay. It's, 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 it's not a sexual act. Yeah, doing figure eights around your siblings' neck tats while you giggle and wiggle with excitement is absolutely not a sexual act. If you were maybe starring in the wrong turn. Other than that, y'all are about as straight as a rainbow. Some tinky fucking winkies if I ever seen one. You two are the first people to ever be chromosexual. And I never thought Fousey Tube out of everybody would be the first person to finally knock some sense into that. And I know many people might believe that this is scripted, but I like to highly disagree, especially with the drama Fousey himself has been facing in the past few weeks. All of what you're seeing is probably as real as it gets with influencer interactions. Guys have influence over the kids. What you do matters. We heard this, bro. If you, I, and listen to them. You don't have to listen to me yet. My brother tried to get me sober for years. When I finally got sober and Are called him sober now? Yeah. I only smoke weed. When I called my brother... for what? Uh, sex addiction and alcoholic. <laughs> well, it looks like you relapse on being addicted to what a dick did because that airport video shows you're swinging right back to it. I understand everybody, especially including Fousey, is going through a mental crisis. I mean, hell, this whole video feels like what it would be like taking a trip to Arkham Asylum. But they all have a degree or basic understanding in them and what's right and what's wrong, so nobody in this damn room should be talking about what's right because everything they did with their careers and lives is wrong. Lesson to be learned here, everybody, is that what happens on social media doesn't ever mean it will translate into the real world. Mermaid Man and Bussy Boy put all of their hopes and dreams and future prospects into a song they sang while suffering from alcohol poisoning in a swimming pool, and ended up only having relevance when they did sus shit with each other. And all of this happened in record time. Only two years ago they had dreams as musicians, and now they just make beats with each other's meats. Really deserved everything coming to them, especially with the self-centered god complex they gave about themselves after gaining a taste of fame. At the end of the day, if you ever feel useless, just remember the incest boys, and that should make you feel a little bit better about yourself. If you guys enjoyed this video make sure to slap a like on this vid before your dad slaps you subscribe hit my vibe and follow all my socials links will be in the description along with my merch if you buy anything message me on my instagram and i'll try to post anybody that gets in on my story all the links will be in the description the shipping's having some issues like i said prior so i'll work on them probably as soon as i upload this video honestly shopify is just being a damn hoe but without further ado i appreciate everyone's patience and support and with that being said i'll see you all on a fuzzy tube video next week i i'm gonna head out this bitch